Now that all that safety talk's out of the way, who's got a cell phone? Put a phone in the air for me. <laughs> if you could please put your phones on silent, do whatever you need to do to keep them from making noise during the show, we would greatly appreciate it. site in Tucson, Arizona, and get on Interstate 10 and head down to Cartner Caverns State Park, just outside of Benson, Arizona. The story we learned at the Visitor Center yesterday about Karchner Caverns State Park is rather interesting. This property belonged to the Karchner family. They had a sinkhole on the property. Well, a couple of explorers went into the sinkhole to see just exactly what was there, and they discovered the caverns. The caverns had not been seen by anyone ever. No one had ever set foot inside the caverns or explored them or anything. Well, eventually the Karchner family decided to sell the property to the state of Arizona, and that was in the 90s. And the state turned this into a state park. Why are you wearing your hat? Because we're going to Tombstone. Right here. Yes, today we're visiting Tombstone, Arizona. That's right. We're going to take you along. We're going to see if we can find some of the different things about Tombstone that you may not have heard of. So come on along. You're probably wondering what brings us out here to the middle of the desert and this big pile of rocks are behind me. Well, this is the burial place of Edward Shefflin. And you may have never heard of Edward Shefflin, but the story of Tombstone starts with him. See, Edward was a prospector who was looking for his fortune in gold and he worked these mounds around here for years and years. And everybody said, Edwin, you're never gonna find gold there. You're just gonna find your depth. The only thing you're gonna find is your tombstone. Well, he continued to prospect these hills and eventually, he found gold. Well, that gold brought other prospectors to this area, and that led to the growth of the town. Well, of course, the town got named Tombstone because of what people said about Edwin trying to find his gold here. Now, Edwin was very successful in his um, claim. He eventually sold his claim for a half a million dollars, which in the 1800s was a huge sum of money. He had one request when he died, that he get buried on this hill out here in his prospector's clothes with his equipment with him. And this monument was later erected 
to memorialize his his existence here and his discovery of this town. And so you really need to start your visit to Tombstone here because this is where Tombstone started. Now we're we'll going to town and show you the rest of the place. We're sitting here at the OK Corral waiting for the famous shootout. Kind of look like I belong in one of those shootouts. You do? <laughs> yeah, with your hat, huh? And the mask? Yeah. Yep. So, we will see what happens. I don't think everyone's going to walk away from this one. <laughs> you don't think so? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Time you see eight good guys. Good guys are the gentlemen dressed like myself, wearing ties around our necks. Enter or exit the stage through either of these doors. I would like for you to cheer for them with your loudest, rowdiest outdoor voice. Let's give it a quick try all together right now, folks. Good guys! Yeah! <laughs> Coffee, he'll calm down. Spin it on <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, I got half a mind. We go back down there, show them who's boss. We're not going back to the aha, right? That's just trouble on me. What I need is another drink. By the looks of you two, I can use one too. <laughs> Don't you think you had enough for now? <laughs> Don't you think I'll tell you when I've had enough? So quit trying to rope me in. What's wrong with you, Tom? It's not even loaded. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> you shooting at me, boy? <laughs> Come on, you're buying. Nothing will come of this. You see, I can talks, and he talks, but he never quite backs up any of those threats. No, sir, he is just a coward. You better watch yourself, Holiday. Don't make me kill you. Mike, you have threatened me. You have threatened them, our boys, and I'm sick of hearing it. What do you say we settle this little blood for your hair now? I've been waiting for this, Holiday. Hey, I, I can't shoot him with my finger. Come on, be Ike. As you can see, I am rightly fixed for a fight now. If I was, I'd take that gun and show you exactly. I'm gonna kill you. This whole town of Let's 
go. You cowboys been looking for a fight. Well, now you, well, now you've got one. Throw up your hands. I want your guns. Hold it, somebody. People will cheer for a triple homicide. <laughs> Frank McClowry, dead. Tom McClowry, dead. 19 year old Billy Clanton, dead. That was it. It was over before that was started. That, folks, was our show. We hope you enjoyed it. So how was your uh, visit to Tombstone? Windy. Yeah, it, it, is, it is very windy. We're actually kind of found a spot where we can get away from the wind just a little bit just to film this. But it's gotten to be real well windy today. That's why you're not going to hear us talking about uh, downtown Tombstone. Yeah, it was neat. We got to see the gunfight at the OK Corral. Yep. And that was pretty neat. And then we just looked around some of the um, shops. The shops. Yeah, they do have um, several restaurants, bars, and saloons, but we just still don't feel comfortable doing that. So, right. another time we'll, you know, we'll do that. Right. And so Tombstone is kind of a little bit of a touristy trap, you know, town. It's sort of a, you know, these western towns that have a little bit of a story and kind of recreate the western feel. Most of the shops are jewelry and, you know, touristy stuff. So. T-shirts. Yep. Hats. Yeah. So it was fun. We weren't yeah. that far from it, so it was fun. Yeah. Let's get going before we get blown away. Okay, let's yeah. <laughs> Like I said, all these rocks, they didn't want any of these people to escape. Yeah, I guess not. Like, a lot of unknowns. Yeah. Probably people who rode in the town and got into trouble. And, and they didn't know them and just yeah. buried them here and said, unknown. Yep. Yeah. My hair look all right. Uh -huh, we'll see. I think so. Okay. <laughs> Today we're in Bisbee, Arizona, in the southeastern end of, Ari of the state of Arizona, and it's about 25 to 30 miles from Tombstone. 
it's another mining town in the state. Um, yeah, they were known for their copper mine. And there is a place over here where you can tour uh, a mine. You actually go down into one. Um, but you have to get reservations for that online and, and in advance, so we didn't do that. But we kind of walked up and down the street, and there's a lot of nice historic, historic buildings and little shops and a lot of antique shops here. Yep, a lot of antique shops, novelty, novelty type shops. Right. A few little restaurants and bars, and yeah. there's a little brewery and different things like that here. Right, there's a old library building which now houses the post office. And several, the library's still there, it's on the second floor. Okay. Yeah. Several hotels. Yeah. An old theater. And we're sitting in the garden area of the museum, which is a museum of copper mining. Yeah. Again, you have to call and make reservations to go in to get tours of the museum. Right. Right. It's the life of the COVID world, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. But it's a nice little town to explore. Like Randy said, I mean, they have a lot of interesting looking buildings, historic buildings. And that's always neat to see the different architecture and style of the different buildings. So that's, you know, that's really neat part of these old towns. Yeah, and this is, this town is like in, well, I guess it's called the Tombstone Canyon. And so it's kind of all on the edge of hills either way so there's a lot of up and down um, walking and stairs and everything but all the houses are all kind of built up the elevation in each side of the town right and it seems to be quite a few people do live in this town yeah yeah I mean it's now really just a tourist town it's not I don't think there's a business here or copper mining anymore no but people live here yeah so yeah what else can we tell them <laughs> Um, I don't know. Well, I think we covered just about everything that they have to offer right now. Right. So let's show you some video of the town and uh, we'll walk around and give you uh, a little bit of a video tour. Behind me is the Lavender Pet Copper Mine in Bisbee, Arizona. This was the lifeblood of this town for many years, but the mine closed in 1974 because the cost of producing this low-grade copper was too expensive versus the cost of what you're getting for copper. There's also been a number of environmental impacts of this. A lot of the stone and such that came out of the copper mine was eventually used to build the streets and such in the town which now had to be restricted because they have poisonous materials in them so it's, it's kind of an interesting history of this copper mine how it gave life to the city but it's also kind of poisoned the city throughout the years today we're visiting the discovery center which is inside the the campground that we are currently staying at yeah, we're staying at uh, Ketchner Caverns State Park, which is in Benson, Arizona. And we're going to check out the Discovery Center. We don't have um, tickets to tour the cavern. Those were sold out.
about six weeks into advance and we didn't think of looking to get them ahead of time so we actually didn't know six weeks in advance we'd even be here so i guess that's a good reason as any right but we're gonna go check out the discovery cha uh, channel yeah we're gonna check out the discovery center and museum and see what's there What did you think of the museum? Um, I thought it was nice. It was, it was very educational in telling on how the um, cave itself was formed. Yeah, and the slag mites and slag tights and all the other things that hang from the ceiling and how they were formed. Right, right. And a lot of neat displays. Yeah, and I actually thought the little video that they show where it kind of talks about how the cave became a state park and how it's been made accessible for people is kind of neat. Yeah. That actually made me more want to go see the cave than anything. Right, right, yeah. the way it was built. And um, yeah, it talked about the different things that live there, the different um, species, the insects, yeah. uh, the bats. Yep. Um, but it looks like it'd be a great tour. Yeah, it's something we're gonna have to figure out how to do sometime in the future. Right, right. Unfortunately, we made the reservations here for the campground too late to get into one of the tours this yeah. time. Yeah, we're here in uh, towards the end of March, and they're booked out to the end of April. So about six weeks ahead, yeah. they are booked with our tours. So we'll look into it should we decide to come back to this area in the fall or early next year. Yeah, and you know one thing I, I learned that I, makes sense now? This park is considered a dark park. And I thought it was more for stargazing, but it's for the bats. Okay. Yeah, didn't yeah. realize that. And they come out at night. So. Right, and we go in. Right. <laughs> but, you know, during the warmer weather, when you're sitting outside, you're probably going to hear them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. I know they're probably not that many around at this time. They said they don't come here until April. Right. right. During their, their matey se mating season, and they raise their um, offspring. Right. Right. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, everybody, this is where we're going to end this week's video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. We post new videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you follow along the adventure. And if you've ever been to Bisbee or Tucson, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. 